all the, the sons and the Holy Spirit one with me. As we as are still looking, looking to the team that we started with, with from the beginning of the mission week, week, week uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 12, 12 and verse 2, verse 2 looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. So, so all the reading this morning, this morning was about, about the wedding, the wedding itself. itself. How the, the final day, day of judgment, of judgment and he is gathering everyone, everyone and this is the wedding, wedding ceremony. ceremony. And we discuss it in the morning in details. All the reading this evening, evening is about, about preparing the, the bride. And the bride is the whole church and each one of us. We sang many times today, I'm not sure if you were looking for it or not, we said, Emmanuel, our God and our King. It's He's our God and King. Then the next verse immediately, my good Savior and my Lord Jesus Christ. So He's our Savior and my Savior. So how He is preparing the church and preparing every one of us. So I will go through one or two of the Gospels of tonight to see what sort of joy was set before him for you in person as his own bride. So we read in the first Gospel today in Matthew and in chapter 22. And the king coming in to look over the guest, he saw a man there who did not have a wedding garment. So our title tonight is The Wedding Garment. When you go to the Jewish tradition to find out what does it mean, a man coming to the wedding of the king without the, Jewish, without the wedding garment. And most of the Jewish tradition are confirming. When the king is holding such great festival, he is the one who is offering the wedding garment. So if you come with your own garments, it's not acceptable. So why this man was seen as an alien among them. He was telling him, and he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. He is the one who is going to prepare your own personal garment. Abuna told us last night how we can be prepared to receive this garment. Some of us still think I can make my own wedding garment. If you go to Isaiah chapter 61, he is telling you, I am tailoring this garment for you in person. It's different from anyone else, but it's called for you the wedding garment. He says in Isaiah 61 and 10, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul will be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the robes of salvation. He covered me with the robe of righteousness, like a bridegroom adorns himself with ornaments. He's telling you, I am making this wedding garment for you. You received it in day one. When you were baptized, you received the sonhood of God. And then you sealed it with the Holy Spirit when you received the chrismation. And all the day long, till today, you are cleansing yourself through the sacraments of repentance and reuniting yourself with the body and the blood of Christ. But here with a second. You can easily say, I will accept this wedding garment provided you have to do something for me. And maybe this something is totally the opposite, what is bland in the mind of God. I would like to wake up in the morning and find my boss at work is not there in, anymore. Or I would like to get rid of my husband, or my wife, or my kids, or my parents. He's telling me, I will tell you a secret. I am decorating your wedding garments, and the tools which are in my hands, it is your husband, whom you can't deal with him anymore. It's your wife whom you feel it is the unbearable woman in the world. He is telling us, I am making a special wedding garment for each one of us, for each one in person. Why? Because it is my job. I am tailoring for every one of you. Because in my wedding, in my ceremony, in my festival, everyone has to come with my own handmade wedding garment. Would you accept in this special week to be in this process of receiving this beautician from the hand of our mighty God, who is tailoring this wedding garment for you in person. Then he, in the second gospel today, he was telling us, be careful. It's not only about someone, the king himself is preparing for you a very special wedding garment. 
is telling us some people heard it and felt it's nice. I will do nothing, he is going to do it for me. No. And I want to explain this in detail last night. Yes, he is going to make it with my cooperation. I can't make it for myself. I can't go with any good garments. It should be done by the king. It should be according to the rule of the king. And then I'm going to enjoy his presence. So he was warning, he was warning us in the second gospel. He's telling us about the great divorce. How come two shall be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left? Two shall be grinding at the mill, one shall be taken and the other left. He's telling me once more. It is not what you are doing from outside. And this is what Abuna was emphasizing last night. All of us singing the same song, standing in the same place. But he's looking to your own personal wedding garment. Are you coming with yours or receiving his? which was tailored and designed specially for you. In many occasions, we are going to our fathers of question and saying, I am jealous of my brother or sister, whoever he is. Why? Because he has so and so and I don't have it. He said, I am tailoring for you a very special wedding garment. Don't look to other ones. Everyone has his own suitable wedding garment. So please don't look to others and enjoy what I am making for you. Is telling and calling every one of us. What sort of joy was set before you that you endured this cross? Because I am tailoring a special wedding garment to each one. Is calling me my God, my Savior, my Lord Jesus Christ. So when we stand again and sing it before him, we are standing before the king who is inviting us to his very special ceremony and preparing every one of us. I'm going to adorn you I'm going to beautify you. I will put my robe of righteousness, my robe of salvation on you. But without your cooperation, nothing will be happened. With being stumbled and grumbling against every single thing, be careful. I am using my tools to beautify your wedding garments. It's your harsh manager at work. It's your harsh professor at college. It's your wife. It's your husband. It's your parents. It's your kids. So be thankful and be in a process of enjoying a joy that has been set before you. So some people will say, but why? Why I am suffering? I feel my suffering is above everyone else. I feel that what I am going through is not bearable at all. So even sometimes I am serving and why everyone is attacking me in my ministry. He was telling us a very nice parable in Matthew chapter 13. You know the Bible, I will just share with you one verse of it. That someone who is planting a good plant, during the night, someone came and put some weeds in between. So the servants of this master said, stop, we need to cut all these weeds. Who did it? The enemy brought it inside your good vineyard, inside your own church, inside your own family. What we can do? And he's insisting in verse 30. Let both grow together until the harvest. If you feel that there's weeds in your life, weeds around you, in your ministry, in your family, in your workplace, the Lord doesn't want to uproot them now. He's waiting for their conversion. Otherwise, there is a time of harvest. That's why he is telling you and me, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together Darnell and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my granary. There is a time. If you see the weeds, it's a sign that there is a good wheat there. Don't be upset. The master himself is telling you and me, let them both grow together to the time of the harvest. So if you feel it's okay, I'm waiting for you and I'm cooperating with you to make my wedding garment. He's telling us in the second uh, third gospel about second gospel, sorry, in Matthew chapter 24. It is exactly like the days of Noah. Noah was for 120 years nearly was telling them the flood is coming. You are joking. You are saying the same message for 120 years. In the morning he was telling us the day of the Lord is coming. Don't accept the lies of the scoffers. And tonight, 
is telling us he is preparing his bride, but it will be the same thing like the days of Noah. But as the days of Noah were, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the blood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered into the ark. So it's telling you, be serious. So are you going to withdraw from the world? It's a lie. We are here to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. That's why even when he saw that the enemy brought in his good vineyard or his, go his own good field beside the wheat, he planted darnels. He was telling them, let them both grow. We are not able to discern between them now because at one point he will make a miracle. Who can imagine that Saul of Tarsus will be the great St. Paul? It was easy for many people to say, let to pray that God will take him away from our, our way. But the Lord was keen to give him a, a second chance, third chance, until he received something differently. The third gospel was telling us about the virgins. What sort of joy that has been set before you? I am preparing you all to be my virgins. But be careful. All of them were called virgins. All of them were wearing the same clothes. All of them were handing or holding the same lanterns. But in the end, there was a difference in, in, inside them. As Abuna was telling us last night, it's not about the leaves of the fig tree. It's about the fruits of the fig tree. So he's encouraging us, don't be deceived with an outside or superficial way of worship. You are here to enjoy the real relationship, a fruitful life, putting in front of your eyes that the virgins. He came to find virgins, but real virgins, not superficial ones. And in the very end, in the fourth gospel, it was the gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 23. What are you saying, Lord? I am here, I'm sitting before my eyes, the joy of having a wedding garment for each and every one. But now you are standing before the scribes and the Pharisees, the leaders of the religion of that time. And he was telling them many times, woe to you. Why? Because you are saying something, living another life. You are saying something and teaching something, and your life is totally the opposite. He's telling us, don't be deceived. I'm tailoring for you a very special wedding garment, but this special, very special wedding garment might be blemished with some wrong teaching. Be careful. Be alert. Don't be deceived, even from the leaders of this religion. That's why he was telling them, be careful. Those leaders were deceiving you, mainly by their own deeds. At the beginning of the chapter, he was telling them, listen to their teaching, but don't behave like them. Again, as we said last night, it's about the fruits. It's not only about words. We need proper teaching and real proper life. The, the fifth gospel was ending up telling us if he is preparing the wedding garment for each one of us, if he is preparing his bride, be careful because the conspiracy is going to happen. They all agreed, the priests, the chief priests, the scribes, the Pharisees, we have to kill him. Whoever will see him, let us kill him. Then at the very end, let me share with you one last thing, how we can apply this in our life. How I can be prepared all the day, cooperating with the synergy, with the grace of God, by my free will, to prepare my wedding garment with him. He is the tailor, he is tailoring it for me, he is giving it to me, but without my cooperation, it will never happen. Let me share with you one verse from Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. We meet every day whether at work or in the church or in the house of each other, he's telling us, don't make your meeting as normal, as the manner of many, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. The day approaching is not telling us the final day only. It's in a very personal way. If you are going to live another 50 or 60 years, and we are going to meet tomorrow, it will be 60 years less one day. So we are approaching our day. We are approaching our wedding day. So the church sees this 
is a departure. It's a wedding day. The soul, one of the church fathers said something very interesting. On the day of the death of everyone, the master is saying, your wedding garment is ready, and I have finished beautifying every single thing in you. Now you are ready to be a bride for the heavenly groom. This is how the church portrayed death. That's why he was telling us, whenever you meet, if you are really waiting and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord, as St. Paul Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 3, then our meeting is enriched more with the presence of God. St. Peter says even more in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11, if anyone speak, let him just speak. What? The very oracle of the word of God. That we are enriching each other. We are calling each other. The day is approaching. We are waiting this coming Messiah. But sometimes we feel, what I can do again? If now all our meetings will be in the presence of the heavenly groom, all our meetings will be sanctified. We are not going to say words that offending the Holy Spirit or quenching the Holy Spirit who is in me. St. Peter is telling me, if you missed out, there's a way to come back. Let me share with you last couple of verses, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. Therefore, brothers, rather be diligent to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you shall never fall. What is this calling and election? It's saying you remember that there is a joy has been set before my eyes. That's why I endured the cross, despising the shame. And I'm calling you to go the same path, same way, to enjoy the fullness, to see there is a joy in your way of following me. It's not about when we follow God, we will be miserable people. We will be most enjoying our life among all other nations. That's why in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, he was telling us, it's a joy to be your sons and, and to be my sons and my daughters. And we are enjoying this every day in our life. Then he is adding, for so an entrance shall be ministered to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in abundance. But this abundance also still divine human act he is offering this abundance without you stretching out your hand and taking your portion, cooperating with his grace, you will enjoy nothing. That's why we pray this Passover week. We are passing from death to life. We are passing from making my own personal wedding garment to put it aside and to take his own the one which is made by the king, adorned by the king, adorned by the hands of the king through everyone in the body of Christ. So everyone in my workplace, in my college, wherever I go, he is using everything to knit and to tailor your own personal wedding garment. We pray that every time we come before the Lord, we have such joy, we have such reason to endure the cross, despising the shame. In the end, now we are having the concluding prayer. Please pray for the one you feel you want to get rid of him from your life. This is the hand or the tool in the hand of the Lord to beautify you and to adorn your wedding garment. We are here to re be reunited with the Lord, reunited with each other, and reunited in a great sense of being in his presence and he is going to make this miracle of unity as he prayed many times in his last night before going to the cross. May the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you, with you from now and forever and ever. Amen.